guys, my name's Cassidy and I'm here to tell you about my testimony. Um, so just a little bit of background on who I was before I was a believer. Um, I was an extreme atheist, an extreme vegan, um, pansexual, and honestly just an egotistic, terrible person. I was mean, I actively shamed Christians. I wouldn't even say bless you when someone sneezed. I wouldn't eat with anyone who ate meat. I just went out of my way to shame anyone who didn't believe in what I believed in. And I basically made veganism my god. I went to school for animal rights. I did, I worked for PETA. You know, I was really into it. I did, um, like, protest. I mean, I did pride parade. I was in a lettuce bikini on Capitol Hill handing out veggie dogs to senators. You know, I was in it. Um, and then my life flipped. So June 2019, um, I had a really bad stomach ache and that lasted for about a week. And I finally went to the ER and they did a CAT scan and they said it's Crohn's disease. So that's where my battle really began. Um, so after that, my health really began to decline. Doctors were prescribing me medication, pain medicine, anything to just help, but nothing was working. Um, I lost about 60 pounds in three months. I had excruciating pain every second of every day um, to the point I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't lift my legs. Uh, my mom had to help me to the bathroom sometimes. I mean, the worst pain. And it, kind of to put it in perspective, imagine like 10 of your worst Charlie horses just stuck in your stomach at all times. I mean, every bite of food just hurt me even water hurt me sometimes I mean it was painful every bite I just had anxiety about um and every day I I didn't know if what day would be my last day every day I woke up and I hated being here I just hated every second of it I just was wanting to die wanting to die I wanted to kill myself I was either gonna die from this disease or killing myself either one and I was fine with it I mean I had nothing to live for. I had no hope. So <clears throat> this was about like six months of this intense pain. And I lost, you know, a lot of, in my personal life. Um, it's, it's a hard thing to go through. So um, Christmas Eve 2019 comes around and um, I was doing really bad. And I knew it was Christmas Eve, but I was like, mom, like we got to go. I'm doing really bad. I don't think I'm going to make it. So I'm in the ER and they're just pumping me with pain meds and steroids, anything to help, but it wasn't helping. And I was there for about a week and I felt it that this was going to be my last night on earth. Like this was it. And I was, I was excited. I was like, no more pain, no more tears, nothing. I was like, yeah, let's, let's do it. I don't want to be here anymore. I don't have any hope. I have no reason to live and nothing. And then I had the same dietitian every single morning come in. And then there was that one night that I thought it was going to be my last. And this woman comes in and she's this beautiful Jamaican woman. And I've never seen her before. And I've been in and out of the hospitals. Like I, I know these people really well. I've never seen her before. Um, so she comes in and she's staying there and she's asking what I can eat and I'm like nothing nothing and then all of a sudden like these tears just come coming down my face and I didn't really have any emotions at that time I really couldn't read I couldn't function I was just I was very much a vegetable I mean I was only 80 pounds just sitting there just waiting to die and she comes in and she sees me crying and she's like, you know, we need to pray. I'm going to pray with you. And I used every ounce of my energy left to tell her, no, we are not praying. I am an extreme atheist. You will not, no, 
no, no, no, no, no. And then she's like, no, we are. And she goes to my side and you know, at this point I'm like, you know what? Talk your nonsense, whatever. I don't even care. If you want to try, go ahead. So she grabs my hands and she begins to pray. And I've never heard like, she had so much passion for me, but I've, I don't know her. I mean, she doesn't know me at all. She doesn't know what I've been through, nothing. And she had so much passion in that prayer. And I don't remember a lot of it, but I do remember her saying, you will heal and you will be a healer. So after she left, I didn't expect anything like from that. I really didn't. So I go to sleep hoping I'm like, I'm gonna die tonight. Like I was, I was hype. And I wake up the next day. I have absolutely no pain, no pain. I can walk again. Like I just, something, something sparked in me. I don't know what it was. And my mom was like, what's going on? The doctors were like, no, this, this is like what happened. And I just kept saying, I don't know. I just have this light within me. I have a light within me. And um, I was like, I can leave the hospital. I'm fine. And they're like, no, no, no. So they made me stay another day, which was whatever. It's fine. But uh, so I left and I still didn't believe at this point. I was just kind of like, oh, I'm healthy. I can wild and out now. So I did. I started to party more. Um, you know, I was drinking, smoking, having sex, doing anything I could to kind of fill, fill a void. Um, I was talking to different girls at that time and one was a Buddhist so I have like all these Buddhist tattoos and I was um going in kind of that route I was like oh like enlightenment Buddhist da, 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 yoga all that um and then COVID hit so I kind of isolated and was really thinking about it more and I was like oh like maybe God is mother earth and it's nature and that's God and um I was kind of rolling with that for a little bit and then I woke up one day and I just had on my mind her hands, that woman's hands on me. And I just thought about it more. And I'm thought of, I thought about it, I'm like, she could have lost her job for praying for me. She would have lost everything. I could have sued her. I could have destroyed her, but she still continued to do it. She came at a time that wasn't normal, a woman I've never seen before. So they, all right, let's, let's dive into this. Let's find some truth. So I go online. I'm looking all over the hospital's directory, trying to find this woman. There's, I can't find her. I mean, no, like she, she just didn't exist. And I knew in my heart, even before searching, I knew she didn't exist. And I had to put beside my pride, put beside myself. I mean, I had to really just admit that I was wrong and that was an angel sent from God. It, it had to be divine intervention. There is no physical way that I could have woken up without pain and still be alive. There's no physical way, none. And I had to admit that. I had to admit that there's a God. There's someone who loves me that would save someone like me. I mean, I actively shamed Christians. I actively went against his kingdom. I did everything against it, but he still had hope for me. Like, and I, like I lost all hope. I lost everything. And he still saw something in me. I don't, I don't know. But I mean, he, he does, he loves all of us. If we just open our hearts to him, I mean, what do you got to lose? You got nothing to lose. So just try it. <laughs> but, and a lot of people think, you know, when you're saved, life's just perfect. Life's just grand. You get blessings and da, da, da. And I will, I mean, the blessing is that we're saved, you know, and we have eternal life with our savior. Like that's the blessing. And, you know, after I've realized that it was an angel that really started my spiritual walk with the Lord, I still i mean i still have health issues i've been in the hospital for months at a time um since then i've gone through the most horrendous 
surgeries, so much pain still. And like I have a permanent IV to my heart. Um, I have an elostomy bag, um, but it's saving my life. Um, so, <clears throat> you know, I've been through these trials and these struggles, but I can tell you with all of my might that it is so much better with the Lord by your side. I mean, I was a, I was a sinner. I mean, I'm still a sinner and he still loves me just the way I am. And I just, I didn't deserve, I, I didn't deserve his love. I mean, I deserve hell. I really did. And you know, I'm just, I really just am so grateful for him. And even with my struggles, I see the influence that my struggles have on people. Even my mom, she wasn't a believer either. And then she saw what, what, what God has done for me. And, you know, she had to put away her ego and be like, you know what? I was wrong. He does, he is real. And even through these hospital times and, and these deep, deep struggles, I still see his hand through the whole time. I mean, from nurses praying, from being able to talk about God to people who don't believe, I've, and he's now filled that void, that veganism, my pansexualism, my atheist, anything that I wanted to attach myself to, he's filled that void. He's filled it with his love to the point where I don't need anything else. I'm so just in awe of, of his capabilities. And I really just, I pray that, you know, this testimony will touch your heart. And yeah, I just, I pray that you can just give him a chance. Just give him a chance. You know, this is an evil, evil world. There is an enemy. But we have a savior. We have a comforter. We have someone who's by our side constantly. And I still have upcoming surgeries. I have um, tests and the whole whole shebang. So there's still a lot in, until this, this trial is over. But... I know it's gonna be okay. And if you could just pray, I have um, a CAT scan August 10th to see my update. And then I think my surgery will be end of October and that's hopefully to reverse my elostomy bag, um, but it might be permanent, but um, they just have to take out a lot of my colon, a lot of my intestines. Um, so if you could just keep me in your prayers, I just really hope it, it goes well. Um, and thank you for taking a time to listen to an old wrench like me. And, um, I do just want to end it with the verse that, you know, everyone should really just, the first one you should read, it's, it's the most important, but, um, John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall receive eternal life. That's it. All you got to do is believe. This world makes it so, so hard, but it's not. It's easy, it's simple. And these religions, they're trying to fill that void too. If, if any religion that tells you to do something, no. That's what Jesus, Jesus says done, religion says do. It's done, it's finished. When, when Jesus was on that cross and he died to save us, he said, it is finished. Dunzo. You don't have to sacrifice to these gods or whatever. No, there's no more. It's done. He won. He wins. And that's all I got to say. So thank you guys.